Hey guys, what's up? I'm back. I'm doing the second part of the video that I did a couple weeks ago, which was uh, my first video was asking you guys to send me in your questions for health, fitness, nutrition stuff. So today I am answering your questions back as promised. I have my laptop in front of me right now. I'm going to go through questions. So if you guys see me looking down, I'm not ignoring you. Don't worry. I'm pulling up questions. I'm gonna to try to go through it as fast as possible, but I also wanna give you guys enough details where you guys won't have more questions for me in the comments section. I know sometimes I start rambling, kind of like right now. Okay guys, so I'm actually backtracking here because I just finished this video and it's fucking long. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to condense it like super short because you guys had a lot of questions in here and I wanted to try to be thorough with it. Maybe you guys just put your headphones on when you're like driving or something and just listen to my lame ass voice or something um, rather than try to watch like the whole video. I don't really know what to say. So let's just jump into it and let's get this thing rolling. From Pippi Glockencake, will your babies be vegan too? Yes, our babies will be vegan unless there's some extreme medical emergency or something where they need I don't know, <clears throat> something derived from an animal, uh, then obviously for their safety that would be the case, but yeah, they're gonna be vegan. Okay, next question from Myra L. So as a vegan, do you shit less and does it smell less like shit when you do shit? So this is an interesting question because a lot of people get weird about poop and stuff like that. So as a vegan, it is the exact opposite. So actually, nobody could ever tell you that you are full of shit because you shit or poop a lot. I probably poop maybe three, four times a day, I would say. And does it smell less like shit? No, it smells like poop. Poop smells like poop. Okay, next question from Sophia Puig. Pug? Sorry. Uh, what is your height and weight? How many calories do you eat in a day? I am five foot seven and I weigh 140 pounds. And right now I eat about 2,500 calories a day. Uh, next question from Ashley Blanco. Do you work out with Shannon? No, I work out by myself. Uh, next question from Tinka Malinka. Do you have any recipes for vegan brownies and or what is your or Shannon's favorite vegan dessert? I do not have a vegan brownie recipe that I've come up with, although it's pretty easy. I probably use oat flour, sugar, cocoa powder, um, some ground flaxseed with a little bit of water to kind of like help thicken it up and that pretty much would be your vegan brownie recipe It'd just be a matter of tinkering with some of those um, ingredients. And then next question, what vitamins and supplement do you suggest someone going vegan should start taking? By default you have to take vitamin B12. It is very very crucial and very very important in any vegan diet and not just a vegan diet but even as like a meat eating diet uh, as we get older, we start to lose the ability to absorb vitamin B12, and you need to take a very, very high percentage of it. If you guys are wondering what I take right now, I'm taking the Vegan Safe B12, and it is this right here. This has 2,500 MCG, or 41,666% of your daily value for one milliliter. It's little droplets, basically just drip it or drop it into your mouth. So the B12 is the most important one probably and that's just what you have to take, just period. The next one I would say is have your vitamin D levels checked. This is what I take right now. This is a vegan vitamin D3. I take 5,000 IU of this. A lot of people are deficient in vitamin D and it's not just uh, vegans. It's a lot of people, pretty much everybody I know is low in vitamin D and so I take this. So instead of breaking this up actually to probably another question in here which would be what supplements or things do I take, I'm gonna basically do the rest of them right now. So the next thing that I take is I take kelp which is basically 150 mcg or a hundred percent of this and the reason I take this is ba this is basically iodine. So I take iodine because I do not eat iodized salt. I really don't use any salt at all and I have a very like lower sodium diet and I do not eat much seaweed. So when you start to take out iodized salt and you don't eat really like seaweed or any sea vegetables or anything like that, you where's your source of iodine coming in? So that's why I take this. It's a I know it's a consistent source of 100% coming in every day. And so for me this is the route that I take. If you are using iodized salt, you're probably fine but that's a whole other video on like using a bunch of salt. The other thing that I take is DHA, 
EPA omega-3 and this one supplement says 14 drops for an adult. I actually double this. I take 28 drops every day of this. So the stuff that I showed you guys, the kelp or the iodine, the vitamin D, the B12 and the omega-3s, I take that every single day. So the next thing I'm gonna show you, I do not take every day. I do not take multivitamins every day. I take a multivitamin maybe once a week, maybe twice a week, just to, I don't know, throw a little extra in there if I'm lacking in something. My diet is really good, so I'm not really concerned about it, but I will have this Diva vegan multivitamin you know once or twice a week some people might think oh my gosh that's a lot of supplements well the b12 as i said even meat eaters a lot of times have like a low b12 uh, everybody that i know vegan non-vegan they're all low on vitamin d so that's another thing and then the iodine uh, that would kind of be the same thing as if somebody took out iodized salt and took out all of their source of iodine they'd want to replace it regardless of what your diet is and then the omega-3s for the epa and the dha well that's you know, I don't know, that's just really good for you and you wouldn't want to eat so much fish because fish have like the PCBs and mercury and all that stuff. And the vegan omega-3 DHA EPA that I mentioned is done using fresh clean water so it does not have any contaminants or mercury or PCBs or any problems that you have from fish oil. That's why you don't want fish oil or eating fish because it has a lot of contaminants in it. Okay, next question from Anonymous Vlogging. What are some good vegan protein sources other than supplements, soy products, or fake meats? Those aren't cheap or easily available in my country. The best thing that I can say is get back to your whole foods again. So basically you have quinoa, you have rice, you have lentils, you have all kinds of beans. So those are all really core proteins that are basically whole natural foods. And I'll even throw in there like seeds and nuts, as well as nutritional yeast, uh, that, which is basically no fat, low calories and uh, protein in that as well too. I know I'm probably missing some, but those are basically like your core whole food protein sources that are all like really like good for you too. Josh the Linguistic Vegan asked, how do you keep yourself motivated to exercise? Awesome vids by the way, thank you very much Josh. When I get up in the morning and I'm in the bathroom with no shirt on or when I'm going to bed and I'm with no shirt on and I see my body, it really kind of helps keep me motivated for what I'm doing the next day and for what I've been doing. The other things that keep me motivated to exercise is I kind of really want to show that you can be like on a vegan diet and you can still have a good body, you can still be strong, you can still be fit, you don't have to look, you know, like skinny or whatever like the typical like people think that vegans look like. So I really want to show and prove to people that you don't need animal protein. You don't need to, you know, harm any kind of animals. You can get all the sources of carbs and fat and protein that you need from a vegan diet. And the other thing too is I, I look at our bodies and however you want to view it, whether you are religious or not religious or, or whatever, life is a gift. And however you were born or created or whatever you want to say, if there's a higher power or something, I look at my body or I feel from my body and I say, I was given this gift of this body, of this life, whatever. And I want to do really like the best that I can kind of with it. I guess a little bit is kind of like what I can accomplish for myself. And also the fact of I want to be able to, you know, not necessarily live, you know, to forever or something like that or be super, super old, but I want to be able to do things that I love to do. I want to be able to water ski and snowboard and go surfing and do all these things as I get older. And I know that as I get older, I need to stay in shape. And so I don't want to get out of shape and not be able to do the things that I love. And, you know, I want to be proud of myself. And if you take it into like a religious thing, it's like being thankful and grateful, like, you know, God, like you gave me this body to be able to do stuff. Look what I can accomplish and, you know, show you what I can like do with what you've created. That sounds really weird. Um, I don't even know why I like I'm really like said that, but I know that that's like something that kind of is in like my mind too. Next question from Alicia Oman or Oman. Did you ever feel insecure when first starting going to a gym? I want to start going to a gym to work out, but I feel too insecure 
as I'm not super fit like most people who go. Love your channel. Thank you very much, Alicia. I didn't really feel insecure or anything when I go to the gym, but um, th actually the only thing with going to the gym is I don't always know how to use all the equipment, especially when you go to different you know places or for the first time or different gyms, you know, when you're traveling or whatever. It takes like a few minutes to look at the machine and figure out how the heck to work the dang thing or you have to like watch somebody else before they do it. So for me that's probably like what is the most uncomfortable thing is that I feel silly that I don't know where to put the things and you know do all the adjustments or even how to use the machine. But you know what I mean you just you need to go and you need to focus on yourself and everybody in the gym I guess like it could be a sort of a social scene or people like into their stuff or whatever but in reality it should just be a place that you're doing your business and if people are hanging out and they're playing on their phone and they're on Instagram and they're doing all these things like that's fine you know but it, it really should be a place where you're in there focusing and when you're working out and I've said this in other videos too it's like put your mind like get focused okay you need to get in there and like think like what are you working on focus in whether you're trying to get your heart rate at a certain rate or whether you're trying to like work a certain muscle to like concentrate and think about that and try to like you know get rid of the other stuff like you should just be focused in on what you're doing and not worried about what other people are, are doing you know I say it from me from a positive point of view like I see somebody working out that might be overweight or something or they're walking or I'm like that's good like good for them they're out getting exercise so if somebody's thinking in a negative way, like, oh, look at that person, they're like, you know, overweight and they're trying to work out, like, that's such a negative thing. Like, they're, you're trying to better yourself or they're trying to better themselves. Why would you think or say something, you know, negative about that? That's just like negative people and stuff like that. So try not to worry about that. Know why you're going in there. Know what you're focusing on. Know what you're working on. And then just be focused on yourself. It's like, who gives a shit what anybody else is like doing or thinking? You're there to do your thing. Next question from A. Johnston. What are some important core foods vegans should be eating every day? This is a good question, but it's very broad in general. So you really want to focus on a whole food plant-based diet, obviously, with variety. And I say variety, meaning you really want to get, you know, different proteins in. You want to get different vegetables in. So every day you want to just have fruit and vegetables your vegetables you want to try to eat majority of them raw but like some of them cooked um, but then you want to get in core proteins and you know your carbs are pretty easy to just kind of like come in and stuff like that I'd say you know your fruits your vegetables like broccoli or cauliflower green leafy vegetables get in a couple different sources of protein whether it's some soy quinoa brown rice peas beans legumes any kind of stuff like that even you know nuts and some seeds Try to get as much of those kinds of things in into your day as like possible. And with that said, your fats will just kind of come in naturally through those foods, through nuts or seeds or avocados, or even through like soy products, like that's gonna have some fat in it or hemp or whatever. Just try to really like balance it out. Uh, next question from Emily Horner. What advice would you give to new struggling vegans? I'd say probably the biggest thing is don't beat yourself up and possibly start slowly. It really depends on what you're coming from. So if you're already vegetarian and you've been vegetarian for a long time, it's probably a fairly easier transition. But even for then, maybe say, okay, um, I'm going to start to take out eggs. And then you take out eggs and you do that for like a couple weeks and then maybe the next you know, thing is say, okay, I'm gonna, you know, still have some milk, but I'm gonna cut out cheese, and then you cut out cheese. And so you can kind of like do it like a gradual thing. I would rather see people, and this is, this is for anybody, I'd rather see people gradually take things out and span out going to a vegan diet or lifestyle that takes three or four months than trying to cram it all in and do it, you know, overnight. Now, I did it basically overnight. But for me, you know, it was just one of those things that I made a decision. I'm like, I'm done. And that was it. Now, it was difficult and it was a lot of work. It was a couple of years ago where there were a lot less products. But um, as far as like vegan products, but it still, you, it still pushes you to the way that you should be eating, which is more of a whole food plant-based diet. So yeah, they make, you know, vegan pizzas and vegan sausages and vegan this and all this stuff. But it, your core stuff really goes back to your fruit your vegetables, your rice, your beans, your your core like stuff basically if that makes sense. So I'd say you know get your blood tested, make sure that you're getting in the nutrients that I had said before and then start to focus in on your core you know whole food plant-based um, 
foods. And if you're like getting into it, just like I said, take it easy and start to take out one thing at a time. If you're coming from a meat diet, start to take out, you know, red meat and then start to take out fish and start to take out chicken and, you know, whatever kind of like plan that you want to do. Um, next question from Nanu Central. Is the high carb, low fat works for everybody? So I think what you're, what you're asking is, does high, high carb, low fat diet work for everyone? Um, you know, everybody's body is different. So the thing is, is carbs are important, but fat is important. Protein is important. Um, when you start to get too detailed in of saying, you know, like, oh, I, I'm eliminating like all of this like fat or I got to go super low protein. I don't think that's the best thing to do. Now, everybody's body is a little bit different, meaning we're more efficient or less efficient than um, in absorbing different vitamins, minerals, proteins, you know, fats, all these different things. So I think like the best thing is a fairly balanced diet. I mean, in my mind, you know, carbs should be obviously like the, the highest percentage of your day. But like, I don't personally think like say 80, 10, 10, 80% 80 carbs and 10% fat and 10% protein. I don't personally think that that's really like necessarily good. I think that the protein and the fat are a little bit too like on the low end. The other thing is when you start to go in a really, really low fat diet, let's say, or a really high protein diet or a really high carb diet or whatever you want to say, you start to eliminate other good foods out of your diet that you should have in there. So I did pretty low fat for a while. I, I did try to do 10% for a very short period of time and I realized that I was so restricting good foods that it was not good. So pretty much if you're doing, you know, like 10% fat, it is so low that you've eliminated everything. Like you're not really going to be eating any nuts. You're not going to be really eating any seeds. You're not really going to be eating um, any avocados. You're not going to have all these like other good foods that are for, that are like for you. You'd be eliminating because you're like, oh, that's too much fat. Like, you know, like nuts, like a handful, like a small handful of nuts. That's a, a lot of fat, but it's a good, healthy, whole food, plant-based fat. Now I'm not saying you should be just, you know, diving in the nuts, but when you are such a low, low, low percentage of fat, you're taking out like other good foods that you should have in your diet. So it, hopefully that makes sense. But with that said, like I said, you know, you can always kind of like work around some different things. You could try some different percentages and see how your body feels, see how like you're reacting to everything and kind of adjust it and tailor it, you know, to yourself a little bit. Uh, okay, next question from Sandra M. Hello, do you include honey in your diet? I think you mentioned before in an older video a long time ago that you do and I'm wondering if you had changed your mind about uh, this from an animal rights health perspective. Okay, so there's another question here, but I'll answer that one first. So I don't have honey like in my diet or included in my diet. I haven't bought a jar of honey or anything in forever. The asterisk sign that I had for that or have for that, what would be a good example? If a family member or something bought me, I don't know, some Christmas treats, you know, and I'm visiting them and they say, oh, like I checked, it was, it's vegan and uh, it doesn't have any animal products in it and I saw that it had honey, I wouldn't look at it and be like, I'm not fucking eating this, this has some honey. I'd just be like, oh, you know, thank you very much and I'd probably like have, you know, something. But um, that is like a very far and few between thing, so I don't eat honey um, at all really. I don't buy the jar, I don't buy it on a normal basis. It's just a, a very far and few between thing, but it's not like a common occurrence. So hopefully that makes sense and you're right, honey is not vegan. Um, so that's kind of, like I said, the, the only very minimal exception on rare, rare occasions, if that makes sense, I guess. And then the next question, on a different note, what apps do you recommend for vegan lifestyle? Do you track calories, workout, and more? Thanks so much, regards from Japan. I don't really have any vegan apps of, like, tracking stuff. Um, I do follow a lot of different, you know, um, people or different things, like, on Instagram and stuff. And I do track calories and workout. I have like a very consistent workout routine. And um, for calories and stuff, I do track a lot of that stuff because since I've been vegan over the past two and a half years, or about two and a half years, I've tried different things, kind of like I mentioned with the different percentages, different protein, different carbs, and then I've tried higher calories and lower calories. And I'm really trying to do these things to be able to give you guys insight and to try to find really like a good scenario or a good advice and good 
um, vegan diet, like for me, myself, and friends, family, you know, you guys, all that stuff. And um, with that said, I plan on writing my next book, um, going into vegan or being like on a vegan diet. And I kind of like have wanted to wait as I make all these adjustments so I can have like a really good idea and say, I've done this, I've tried this. Um, and stuff like that, if that makes sense. Same from Sandra, your next question, I forgot to ask, will you be releasing more books, um, or ebooks? Yeah, so that was kind of like I'd mentioned, you know, part of why I want to track the calories and the different things is so when I do write my next book, I'm able to give a lot of information and stuff. Next question from Star T, is it healthy for pre-diabetics to be on a high carb, low fat, oh, and then in kind of, um, parentheses here, raw diet. I don't really like the idea of a fully raw diet. Uh, if you have a really high percentage of a raw diet, I think that that's probably, you know, fairly okay. But I think that you are missing out on a lot of other good stuff that is like cooked foods. Um, like I said, the same things that I said before, your beans, legumes, rice, quinoa, uh, a lot of those things. I think are healthy for you. I think kind of like not necessarily pre-diabetics, but I think just people in general, your whole food plant-based diet, uh, a balanced varied diet is kind of your ideal scenario for anybody, whether you're pre-diabetic or not. And just tailoring those things a little bit and watching some of your you know, glucose or triglycerides and different things that you need to be focused on if you're pre-diabetic, um, a lot of that comes into play with you know, getting in shape, losing fat, um, dropping your cholesterol, like doing all those other things too. So definitely need to be adding in like active uh, lifestyle as you are doing some of the food stuff too. Okay, next question is Caroline and Chloe or Carolyn and Chloe. Are you vegan because you don't like killing animals or are you vegan because of the health benefits? This is a really good question. I, when I first initially switched over to being vegan, I did it from strictly a health reason. I think everybody is gonna start it out or start out being vegan for three different reasons. Either it's for planet, environmental reasons, animal reasons, or health reasons. But as you become, or as you are vegan for a while, I think that it gets wrapped into all three. So if you were to ask me today, now, um, I really am vegan for all of the things. Um, but the health thing is the, the, the biggest reason or was the biggest reason. Um, but th it kind of changes from a day-to-day -day basis, to be honest with you. I mean, one day you may wake up and you may not be thinking of health stuff, but you may be like, I don't want to contribute to the mass murder and slaughtering of animals. or you may wake up and say, I don't want to contribute to the greenhouse gas, so I want to leave the planet in a better place, so I'm doing it for the planet. Another question from Sophie Pug. Uh, how often do you work out and eat in a day? I eat four meals during the day, and they're just like all pretty much the same size or calorie meals, I guess. Um, so I don't really have snacks in between there. They're just like four solid meals. And then um, as far as working out, I work out, basically I work out, every day other than say Sunday. I could be water skiing or snowboarding on like Sundays. Uh, I mean, I could have like exercise every day, but like as far as like a workout kind of routine. Next question from Tara H. Great to see you back on YouTube. Thank you very much. Uh, what is your definition of balance in terms of eating and exercising? And do you feel you live that definition? What advice do you give someone who's trying to find balance? What steps can they take to achieve a well-balanced life with food and exercise, it's a struggle for so many. Okay, so first thing on here is what's your definition of balance in terms of eating and exercise? I think maybe what you're referring to are people who are going way too overboard, possibly. Um, so on my cardio days, when I do cardio, um, I basically do cardio like three days a week, like say Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. But basically I'll do like cardio for an hour and then when I'm doing my weight training, it's usually from like 35 to 40. 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. I think it's finding a balance that works for you. I don't think that over-exercising is good because it's gonna put a lot of stress on your body, but I would say that working out a little bit every day is probably better than trying to jam two hours in two or three times a week or something. Giving your body enough time to rest and recover and or working on like different muscles. So you know, like bodybuilders, they might do like arms and chest one day and then 
back and legs another day and you know whatever else some another day and they'll span it out so you have some time to recover same with say cardio you know um, or like heavier cardio uh, the next thing is as far as like food I think that once you get in a routine you start to eat like good food and you start to make you know a lot of your meals it starts to become routine and then if you want to have you know like more of a relaxed lifestyle on like a Friday night or Saturday night or like on Saturday or Sunday or weekend or something that's not gonna completely kill off like your whole plan I mean you don't want to just come Friday night, just eat terrible Friday night, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and then get back in the swing of things. But if you want to have more relaxed, like, you know, diet or whatever on the weekends, or a little more relaxed um, exercise on the weekends, it's going to be totally fine. Just try not to, like, overdo it, you know? It's better to give yourself some of these breaks so you stay with the program overall than stress yourself out every day, like, over and over and over where you just don't have any break or any kind of like release. So then the other part of that is basically finding what works for you. Some people like working out in the morning, some people will like working out in the evening. So whatever or whenever you can get that in, um, and it, it, granted, like I said, everybody has different circumstances when they go to work, when they get off, if they have kids, um, if they need to prepare meals. So the more on track you can get, like the more organized you can get, it might take a few weeks to get like settled into what works for you. But once you do, it's going to be pretty easy as far as making meals and preparing for the next week or cooking a bunch of beans on a Sunday so you have beans like in the fridge ready for the week or a whole big like pot of quinoa or whatever you want to say. Just like having things organized is probably like the best thing I would say. Okay, next question is from Oscar Wilkinson. Travis, what are your views, beliefs about supplements? Example, mass gainer, whey, and pre-workout. Mass gainer, I mean... You know, that's just basically like a really, really high calorie kind of like a supplement thing. I think it's pretty easy to get in additional calories through, say, like heavier foods, like say like um, rice or possibly um, like pasta or something. It's kind of easy to get up like the higher calories if you're just trying to like get higher calories in. Um, some of the mass gainers are pretty refined and they have kind of like a lot of different like stuff in it. So if you are able to find kind of a more simple one, um, you know, just take a look at the ingredients, but otherwise try to like smash in more calories with like heavier foods, you know, like maybe have a can of beans and a little like, you know, a cup of pasta, which would probably kick up your calorie count for the day, like 500 calories or, or more or something like that. So try to go like more like a natural way. Um, whey protein, I mean, I stay away from any kind of dairy, like milk product. So if you want to do like a um, plant-based protein powder, not against that at all. Once again, like I'll have like a plant-based protein powder that I'll add in to a huge like smoothie shake that I make, which is like with whole vegetables, like leafy greens and fruit and all that other stuff. So it's just kind of like adds into part of a meal, like one of my meals after working out. But like I said, I'd stay away from any like the, the, the animal-based stuff. Just keep an eye on like what the ingredients are because some of them have like a shit ton of ingredients that are like just a ton of this is junk. Um, and then pre-workouts, uh, you know, I've never done any of the pre-workouts at all. Uh, I would say personally for me, I mean, I would, if you needed a pre-workout and you needed to like kind of energize up a little bit, maybe have like maybe a protein bar if you wanted, or maybe I would just like have like a shot or two of like coffee or like green tea or something with maybe some caffeine in it, but that's still good for you. And I'll say caffeine as far as a natural form, as far as say green tea or coffee is going to be good for you and it might get you like a little energized. I would try to go that route over the real high stimulant um, processed pre-workouts if that makes sense. Okay, next question from Nene Noodles. How muscly are you? I'm this muscly. Next question from Pippi Glock and Cake. I have a question, if you're single, would you date a non-vegan? Yes, I would date a non-vegan. I think that it would probably be pretty easy not to say that, oh, I'd be trying to convert somebody that sounds like some crazy religious thing. I definitely wouldn't eliminate someone just because they were not vegan because I was 35, 36 years old before I switched over you know, my diet and it was never really introduced to me before that and I didn't really know anything about it. So I would be bummed if somebody just eliminated me just because I wasn't vegan or something. But the other thing too is I know for me because I cook and I shop and I know a lot of products, it'd be very easy for me to date someone who's non-vegan 
and I could probably guarantee you that probably after a while they would just end up being vegan. Um, and I don't mean that from like a shitty converting snotty point of view, but it'd be easy for me to start out slowly and, and switch out and like have them switch over to vegan butter, which tastes identical. And then maybe a little after that, you know, get like a vegan dressing that they like. It would start to be like a process of just things were just starting to get eliminated. And then of course being around me, they would know all the benefits and all that stuff and see that I'm in shape and that I work out and I have energy and I'm, you know, all these things that like make me me and they would see that and um, I'd be a positive influence or positive role model. And the next question, does your ethics and virtues span across your whole life or just at your plate? Answering that question, yeah, ethics and virtues span across like, you know, my whole life or whatever you want to say, not just at my plate. Obviously to whatever extent you can say for being in 2016, like I said, we still have limiting stuff. Like we bought a car and it's a Porsche and the Porsche, I don't think you can buy it without leather it's just that's just how they all come so once again we're not really at that level or life and being in 2016 that every single product all the time 110 percent we're going to be guaranteed that it's not going to have any you know animal stuff but we do the best that we can on a day-to-day -day basis so yeah my ethics do span across my whole life basically and so i want to buy you know products that are uh, cruelty free um, vegan and as well as like stuff that I'm eating. Okay, next question from Parla Gunner. Why did you turn vegan? I think I talked about this a while ago, but real quick, basically I did a blood allergy test and I found out that I had a, a high allergic reaction to dairy. And so once I realized I was cutting dairy out and I started learning about the dairy industry, I just started reading more and I just realized how terrible and bad, I guess like all the other stuff is. And so basically it started from the you know, health perspective, but it was initially because I found out that I had an allergy to dairy, which most people do. We lose the ability to process uh, lactose, which is a milk sugar. Okay, next question is from Tammy Jones. This is a pretty long uh, question here, so I'm gonna skim through it really fast and then I will give you guys the gist of it. Tammy's question is kind of like a blend of other questions that I've kind of already answered. So uh, Tammy, hopefully some of the other questions that I answered help you with yours. Basically Tammy's husband is vegan and she's vegetarian. She's kind of curious about some different things. So I do track kind of like what I'm eating with some balanced stuff. Um, I know some of the vegan meat replacements you're saying. Um, some of them are like not really working too well for you. Kind of like I said, you know, as I've said before, really kind of getting back to like the whole plant foods is really ideal. If you want to put in some of like the processed fake meats here and there, that's fine. Um, but it shouldn't really be like a core like Part of your meal and then regarding like being a vegetarian because of the dairy dairy is basically addictive and so the majority of people that's why it's hard to give up because it basically has this kind of like has like casomorphins in it and it basically has like these addictive qualities once you give it up then it's you know after a while like it's it's easy and then the other thing is you're asking for like dining out suggestions usually like pretty easy stuff is like sushi stuff and i say like it can be a vegetarian roll um, Mexican food, you just have to make sure that they don't cook the beans in lard and you have to make sure they don't cook the rice in chicken stock. Thai food is pretty easy, like Indian food could be pretty easy. You just have to like just check with the waiter or the server and just check with like some of the ingredients that they're using. Okay, next question from Mia Charlotte. Hey Travis, what are your top three vegan meals? Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Breakfast, I pretty much have oatmeal like every day. That's like right now it's like steel cut oatmeal. So it's steel cut oatmeal. Um, I have grapefruit, lemon water, and there's always berries in my oatmeal and all kinds of stuff, flaxseed and just molasses and a whole bunch of stuff. But basically it's like this huge oatmeal bowl with other fruit and stuff. Lunch kind of varies, but it's usually something with like beans or quinoa uh, or rice and some fruit and uh, broccoli and cauliflower are always like Always, always, always broccoli, cauliflower, broccoli and cauliflower mixed in usually with like rice and beans and stuff, which is like a phenomenal meal. Dinner, uh, you, dinner's usually kind of like the wild card. Uh, breakfast and kind of like my lunch stuff is pretty like similar stuff. Um, dinner just kind of depends on what I have like around. It usually will probably be like lentils or rice, uh, beans, quinoa, kind of like some of the same stuff that I would like end up doing for lunch. Um, just kind of like different combinations of stuff like that. Um, on occasion here and there I'll have like a, you know, a processed 
like a like tofurkey or something like that but usually not that often I usually don't have like kind of like processed meat stuff like that usually I like, figure out what else I want in the day and just like this this whole like jumbled up meals of a bunch of stuff <laughs> next question from vegan low end what's your go-to snack or meal when hosting non-vegan family friends this one is pretty easy if you can put out you know usually some fruit uh, or like mixed fruit that's pretty good uh, I think like everybody pretty much loves hummus so if you have hummus out maybe like two or three different like flavors or types of hummus and then maybe put out a couple different crackers or some chips and then maybe some veggies with that some celery or carrots and that's all really like good food for people to be snacking on too and the other thing would be like I'd say like nuts like mixed nuts next question from Sophia how long are your workouts I kind of answered that before usually like 30 40 minutes for like my weight training like heavy weight stuff and then about an hour for my cardio not on the same day like you know different days next question from xsv rooster hey travis what are some healthy vegan meal ideas that i could make ahead of time and take me with me to work right off the bat i would say it's really easy to, to cut up and take fruit uh, other things you could do would be uh, rice and beans with some hot sauce or you could do maybe some like chopped up real small like veggies like for me like i'll do like a lot of like broccoli and cauliflower chop it up real fine and small maybe add it in with some rice and then add in some hummus that's pretty good you can mix that up the other thing too is you can make like a smoothie or like a like a protein shake with like fruit and vegetables you do like a peanut butter sandwich so Kylie Miller and Ashley Blanco you guys kind of asking the same thing when and how did you become vegan how long you been vegan I've been vegan since March of 2014 so as of this video like about two and a half years next question from Talia Aguilar what do you say when people say vegetables have feelings too I think that's fucking stupid <laughs> I'm a vegan as well and this is extremely tedious. I know it's a silly question, but honestly, like if you are standing in an apple at an apple tree and there's an apple and you pluck it off, it's just gonna grow another apple. If you took a fucking farm animal and you cut its fucking leg off, it's not gonna grow a leg again, it's gonna bleed out and fucking die. So that's probably a good explanation for that one. Next question from Jennifer Lunnelly. Lunnelly, what is your favorite vegan junk food? Uh, probably vegan donuts. What is your go-to breakfast food? We talked about that. How long have you been vegan? Uh, answer that question two and a half years. Would you say you decided to go vegan for health reasons or were you motivated motivated by welfare of the animals? And answer that one too. And what is my least favorite vegan food? I would probably say maybe the very mature kale. Baby kale is fine but like the real hard strong kale oh man like that's just that's very very difficult and rough for me to put down i'll usually buy the baby kale because it's much um it's much easier to eat and it's not such like a strong taste uh next question carrie have you ever wanted to become a raw vegan uh why or why not no i do not and i kind of answered that before because i think you take a lot of um good foods out of your diet well, once again, it's like more of a limiting factor. Now you're putting even more limitations on stuff that you're not going to eat. So I don't agree with that. Uh, I do think that there are a lot of good aspects of it. And I do like a lot of the ideas, like if you were doing it for a few days um, and a, a high percentage of your diet being raw, I think that that could be really good. And a lot of like your fruits and vegetables should be eaten raw. So all of that I agree with, but just to take out so much other stuff, um, I, I don't necessarily like that idea. Next question from Rex David 21 Do you think vegan is a lot more work than vegetarian? Yes, uh, being vegan is more work than vegetarian, uh, just because you, you're, there's more of a limiting factor, mostly like when you're out and eating at restaurants and stuff. After you're vegan for a while and you start eating and stuff, it's pretty easy, but definitely at the beginning, it's just you're limiting more food, so it's you know difficult, you know, more difficult. Okay, next question from Gabri Ella. What meal plans would you recommend that are low in carbs? So if you're looking for something low in carbs, I would probably say something like uh, tofu or soy milk. That's going to be pretty, you know, higher with like the fat and the protein and lower with the carbs. I wouldn't be real worried about like the carbs per se unless it's like refined carbs. If it's like more whole food plant based carb and it has, you know, fiber and stuff in it, it's not like, you know, 
a donut or a cookie or something or like straight sugar like those kind of carbs those ones are bad um, next question is from infinity for life 13 I need to work out more but I don't have any motivation to do it any advice basically feel better and look better okay next question from Elaria Ferrara I'm a vegetarian I'd like to become vegan but there aren't many vegan options where I live. Do you have any advice? I uh, kind of answered this one before. When people talk about vegan options, I think that a lot of times you guys are talking about like the fake meat substitute stuff. So it's really getting back to like your core whole food products, you know, your fruit and your vegetables and your rice and your beans and your lentils and your hemp and your nuts and your seeds and all that stuff. Like they should be pretty available. If not, I always say, you know, we buy your stuff online and have it shipped in. Okay, next question from Isabel Carrion Alonzo. What exercises do you recommend to do at home if you don't have the time to go to the gym? And I always say like you can add in workout stuff like throughout your day. So as long as it's safe, of course, um, use your best judgment, but don't find the closest parking spot. If you have to park a little bit further, you can walk. If you have to go to a second or third level um, floor in a building, take the stairs. Don't take the elevator or take the, you know, stairs not an escalator or something. And when you're, you know, carrying, you know, bags or something like that, you can kind of carry them like at an angle or whatever. I mean, you can do different things rather than, you know, pushing around a cart. You can carry bags, just different stuff like that. But as far as stuff at home, I mean, it's pretty easy as far as you can find something to lift and, you know, use as like bicep curls, or you can sit down and do sit-ups. You can do push-ups. Uh, depending on what body part you want to work on is pretty easier. I mean, you might be able to have like a jumping rope, walk around the block. I mean, you don't have to go to a gym just to be able to do stuff. So any of those kind of things are all really helpful. Next question from Rihanna Mackey. Do you have any easy, quick vegan dinner recipes? That one's easy. Rice, beans, add in some hummus and some hot sauce. Psh, done deal. Made in minutes. Uh, next question from Desert Mermaid. Cool, thanks for doing the Q&A. What is your favorite easy-to-go vegan dinner for the nights you're lazy, too lazy to cook? Sending you, Shannon and Ben, lots of happy mermaid vibes and all my love. I just mentioned that one, which is, like I said, rice, beans, some hummus, and like some hot sauce or something. It's really good, really healthy, a lot of good nutrients in that. Next question is uh, from Love Till the End. What's the difference between vegan and vegetarian? I'll try to link this uh, video that I did in the past regarding this. It's uh, basically the difference between vegan and vegetarian. Um, long story short, vegan is basically you don't use any animal products at all or eat any animal products at all. And vegetarians will consume um, certain animal products like dairy, eggs, cheese, that kind of stuff. Next question from Yal Star. Hi Travis, I asked you on Instagram, I got cookies that said they were vegan on the box, but when I looked on the back, the allergy warning said it was made in a factory with dairy and eggs. Does that mean it's still vegan? Thank you for taking the time to answer my question. So this is a really good question. On the back of a lot of products, it might say may contain milk, may contain egg or something like that. All it really means is you have a big factory, and you have conveyor belts and you have products in there that may not be um, vegan. So they may contain milk or they may contain peanuts or they may contain shellfish or something like that. So basically it could go on the same conveyor belt, like even though it was cleaned and everything else, it may go still go on the conveyor belt. And for legal reasons, they want to let you know in case it's you have some crazy, really, really bad, bad allergies to say, milk or peanuts or something they have to let you know say hey there's not peanuts in here but peanuts were around this product or whatever and so just in case you have a really bad allergy so you're not contributing to harm of animals or anything like that the product is vegan it just may be in the same warehouse or on the same conveyor belt or something like that so if it's vegan and it says vegan or you read the ingredients and it doesn't say anything in it but it just says may contain it's fine I, I wouldn't be worried about that and I would eat it unless you have a really really bad allergy to that product then you'd want to be careful but it would be like an extremely sensitive allergy if that makes sense okay next question is from Maddie McLaren do you count macros yes I do I can answer that before because I'm kind of tailoring and working out some different like plans and ideas do you think analyzing your food is better or should you just eat whatever you want as long as it's vegan i don't think you should just eat anything you want just because it's vegan if it's especially if it's junk food there's like a ton of vegan junk food out there i feel free to eat what you want if it's more of like your whole food natural kind of like foods 
just make sure it's a varied diet. So if you're eating your fruits and your vegetables and you're getting in your core proteins and you know vary like your proteins and doing all these things, I wouldn't worry about it. As long as you're not gaining a lot of weight or losing too much weight or something, I think it's fine. Just like I said, make sure you're getting in a varied diet um, and uh, you don't have to like analyze every single thing that you're doing. If you're striving for like very specific goals, you're like a super core, like hardcore athlete, you're trying to gain weight or gain muscle or different things like that, you could probably be a little bit more strict and try to keep an eye on stuff and say, hey, you know, if I add a few hundred calories of this, it's kind of helping me out or something. But for a general basis, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Just eat healthy and vary your diet. Uh, next question from X Sabrina X Radix. Love your intro music. Thank you. I like metal stuff. <laughs> Can you show us your music playlists and or work out music? I dig your music taste, so I want to find new things to listen to. Let me get my phone. Okay, so I have my phone here. Uh, a lot of times if I'm running, I might just end up listening to like random stuff or it could be like trans like music or something like that for really working out like with my weight. I'm usually listening to something harder. So I have say strung out radio. This is all Pandora, by the way. Um, like no use for a name radio, DRI radio, suffocation, which is like all like death metal, suicidal tendencies radio, Slayer, sacred steel radio. Um, next question is hair by Amy Marie. I finally have my meat down to only turkey and chicken. How can I go the extra step to stop completely? I think the probably the best thing is is when you get it out of your head that that is part of like your core of your food then it starts to get easier because a lot of people before like you switch over or something you think to yourself well you know I have my vegetables and I have some rice and then I have my chicken and, and a lot of people think like that chicken is the core part of your meal and everything else is kind of just the extra around it so when you start to realize that you can take that out and you can make like a big medley of food if you made some big rice bowl and it had you know tofu and it and it had veggies and it had rice and it had sauce and it had all this stuff and it's just this hearty meal you don't need that you know chicken on the side or that turkey on the side if that makes sense if you really want to you can go into the processed um, meat stuff the processed like chicken stuff and they have so many nowadays like it actually tastes like chicken or turkey or something so you can go that route if you want to start to add that in um, but like I said I wouldn't try to like focus on the processed meat you know like at every single meal or like for lunch and dinner like every single day I try to get to your like core stuff but for starting out I encourage you to try some of the different processed you know meats and stuff like that and see which ones you like and you know start to throw it in some of your meals okay next question from Sandra M what do you think about super meat and would you eat it no I would not I remember seeing this a long time ago and I totally forgot about it until it was you know brought up recently and no I would not eat it basically f for those of you who don't know super meat is they, they take I don't know all the details but they're taking like animal cells in um, genes or something like that basically they are using the animal cells to grow meat in a lab in like a petri dish or lab environment to me like that's just gross I, I don't I don't I don't want anything to do with like any part of like animals like meats and cells and eating any of that stuff next question it's from JD07 question is fruits or vegetables both um, next question from Rachel Henning do you have any main tips for starting to transition into a vegan based lifestyle kind of a lot of the stuff that I had mentioned throughout this video which is kind of starting slow starting to take your supplements being educated and just starting to read and like learn about you know different like products and stuff like that but basically just getting into that whole foods kind of plant-based um, diet just starting to eat eat better and stuff next question from Zena X yes I right, love the intro and outro. Yes, because it's fucking metal. And when and what do you eat when you're working out to gain, maintain your muscle mass? Um, I don't personally eat or drink anything while, well, I mean, I'll have like water and stuff like when I'm actually working out. But I think it's kind of like I just do the standard. I mean, when I'm done working out, I'll have my shake, which is basically what I consider one of my meals for the day. And, you know, I'll have some like plant-based 
um, like protein powder, but it's going to have a lot of green leafy vegetables in it. It's going to have whole fruit in it. It's going to have like a whole bunch of stuff in it. And it ends up being like a 600 calorie massive like meal shake basically. Um, next question, the life of me. Brenda, if I wanted to become vegan, what are some good foods to start off with? Kind of like, you know, as I mentioned through the video too, your whole food kind of plant stuff. You probably already eat a lot of, um, you know, vegan stuff right now, which is all of your vegetables and your fruit are, you know, vegan. So eat more of that and then throw in like your other good stuff, like I mentioned. Uh, next question from Carly G. How do you stay skinny because I need help with that? I want to say this is more simple but more complex than it actually is. But basically you want to eat well, you want to eat like good foods and you need to exercise, that's for sure. But then the other thing too is you need to make sure that your blood levels are okay. So the stuff that I take, you know, like making sure I have a you know, my vitamin D levels up, my vitamin B12 levels up, I'm taking the iodine for my thyroid because if your thyroid is off, it could be slowing down your metabolism. If your B12 is low, it could you could not be, you know, utilizing your, you know, food and carbs like necessarily for energy and your vitamin D. I mean, all these things. So I would recommend if you're really struggling that you go in and you have like a full blood workup done and have your different levels checked, do a urinalysis and do like blood workup and maybe hormone levels to check your thyroid. Make sure those are in check because if they're not, you need to adjust some things in your diet and or make sure you're taking the supplement to get those things in check. So then when you eat well and you're exercising and your levels are good, then you should be able to basically like get in shape and all that stuff because if those things are off, like you could be working out a lot, but if you're not eating well, or if your you know level, certain blood levels are off, it's it's gonna be more difficult. So it's really a balance of those three things. Next question from XX Stitch XX: What is your opinion of people that eat junk food every day with no healthy foods? I really don't have an opinion. I mean, it's it's you know gonna catch up with them in some way, shape, or form, whether it's internal or external health. So. I don't really have like an opinion about that. Next question, Aubrey Lauren, what do you feed your cat since you're vegan? Bandit is on a special diet from the vet. Uh, he had urinary crystals when he was younger, so he's kind of like peeing blood, and so this is like a specialized urinary vet food, I guess you could say, um, that like changes his um, pH level kind of thing in his like bladder and stuff. So it is not a vegan food. It is uh, just like a kind of like a general specialized cat food that has, I don't know, chicken and all that other stuff, I guess. Next question from D Ramsey. Do you have any tips on bringing vegan food to work? Any meal ideas? We don't have a microwave, only a fridge. Um, I kind of mentioned some of that stuff from before. A lot of your cold stuff is pretty easy. You know, you could do like hummus with, you know, crackers and vegetables. You could cut up your, your fruit. Uh, smoothies are really easy because you can pack vegetables and protein and fruit all in that and it could, could go in the refrigerator. The other thing is, um, I mean, I'm not sure like where you work or anything, but since you don't have a microwave only a fridge, uh, you could probably buy, especially nowadays, buy a little mini microwave for probably pretty cheap and probably just stash it under your desk or I don't know, something like that. Um, and then you'd have a, a microwave, you know, which would, you know, help you out with a whole other, you know, meals like soups you know you can warm those up and do different things like that so maybe try and take a look into see if you can get like a little microwave or something um next question from hattie m sanchez i'm vegetarian right now and my partner is a chef and he says veganism isn't a healthy lifestyle how do i maintain a balanced diet on the lifestyle i want to be full vegan to be honest listening to this video listening to other people's questions and my answers seeing some of the supplements that i take are all very very helpful i have like other videos on here of like my blood workup and other like what i eat in a day videos and a lot of information on here so um not saying anything with your partner who's a chef but i'm pretty fucking healthy <laughs> So anyways, I mean, and, uh, you know, I understand like the ideas or kind of like the stigma between um, people saying it's not healthy, but kind of once again, it goes back to not being so limiting and eliminating everything out of your diet, like a, say like a 100% raw diet or something. You want to try to keep your options 
o as open as possible as far as cooked foods, fruits, vegetables, making sure you're taking the supplements, making sure you're taking in enough calories and doing all these things and you will not just like survive but you're going to thrive on the diet as long as you're you know eating like you should be eating. It's not a matter of oh well, you have to do all these things to be eating a vegan diet. No you don't have to it's just that's the best way to like live. It's just you know eating natural foods and making sure you're getting in like nutrients that you need. Hopefully that answers your question just making sure your diet's varied and making sure you're getting your which I recommend everybody to do get your blood checked and stuff like tested like once a year every six months it's just making sure like you're getting in the right nutrients and stuff. Next question from Kim L. Travis what's your favorite color? That's a silly question. Um, are you pro or con super meat? I don't like the super meat. Do you have any non-vegan friends? Of course I have non-vegan friends. Just because someone's vegan or not vegan doesn't have any effect on if I'm going to be friends with them. Um, have you ever tried a raw vegan diet? No. The next question from Ashlyn Root. How do you survive? I don't survive. I thrive. Next question from that vegan metalhead, Travis. Although eating whole foods is best, is there a vegan protein powder you would recommend adding to smoothies like brown rice, hemp, pea, etc.? Thanks. There's so many different vegan protein powders out there nowadays. Um, I would find one that you kind of, you know, like, but I would try to keep it minimal on all the extra ingredient stuff in there. Um, I know just by default, just because of looking at stuff, um, Sun Warrior has like a protein blend that it doesn't, they, they have like a natural flavor which doesn't have anything else in it. It's just like, I think, a few different proteins, but there's no sweeteners, there's no fillers, there's nothing. Um, I know Plant Fusion has like a natural flavor one. That one has a little glycine, stevia, and I think silica in it. But other than that, it doesn't have other stuff. Um, some of them just have like a lot of extra stuff in them, like natural flavors and fillers and uh, sweeteners and different things. So just take a look at some of that stuff. Um, find one that you like. Try to find one that's like non-GMO or organic. And you know, I don't think that if you want to do that, I, I that's fine. I would say to 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 add that in your diet if you want. I wouldn't um, do a lot of it. Maybe if like you have three or four or five meals and one of them is like a protein shake and you add in a scoop of protein powder or something, that's fine. I wouldn't probably have like protein powders at like every meal, if that makes sense. Next question from Maddie Hudson. What is your work, workout routine? In general, Monday I would do like chest and back with like, you know, like weight training kind of stuff. Tuesday I would do cardio, which would be running. Um, although like in summertime, Tuesdays is usually when I water ski, so a lot of times in summertime I don't even do like the running kind of cardio as much. Um, and then Wednesday I do like uh, biceps and triceps. Thursday would be running cardio. And then Friday would be stomach, like abs and shoulders. And then Saturday would be like running cardio again. So with that said, when I do my cardio, I add in basically legs with that because if I'm running on the treadmill, I'll put it up at like a real high degree and I'll like kind of run or I'll turn around and I'll run, you know, backwards and kind of squat down. So I end up getting not just like the cardio part, but I end up really like working out my quads and my calves during that routine. So in the weight training part, I'm not doing, you know, leg workout because all my other exercises are like heavy on the legs, if that makes sense. So um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, weight training, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, uh, cardio and then Sundays like off unless like you know it's like the weekend and I'm like water skiing or snowboarding or something but that's exercise stuff not like my workout routine from its cat do you know if there are any brands of vegan meat that are not soy based I don't know off the top of my head most of them are either soy based or they're gluten based unless you're actually like, allergic to soy I wouldn't worry about it too much just make sure that you do get like non GMO or organic and that you don't have a whole ton of it. And I've talked about soy before. I think soy is totally fine and healthy. You just want to get like non-GMO or and or get organic and just don't have like a super high consumption of it. I don't really think that was too much help, but yeah, just take a look around and just kind of like, you know, have to start reading the labels and um, kind of seeing like what's out there. From Shannon Rose, a very inappropriate question. How big is your dick? That's a pretty good question considering you, you did see it last night, but don't worry because you will be seeing it again.
tonight. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully I was able to answer some of you guys' questions, hopefully in enough detail to kind of like push you guys forward and get you guys moving along in the right direction. Any other questions, uh, you can put them in the box below. We can try and go over it a little bit more. Anyways, thank you guys again for watching. Hopefully this helped out and I will talk with you later. Okay, bye.